All right. So thank you. Thank you, Dr. O. <clears throat> the, uh, I'm just really coming to realize how difficult driving is. <laughs> um, so we'll move to a different mode, public transit, and it has, I guess, its own barriers uh, in public transit. I we came out from um, Chicago today. I was hoping to not drive because it's difficult, uh, and but uh, I tried to get on a Greyhound. Well, I was thinking about getting on the Greyhound, and I love how the you know the intercity buses now have a lot of information about bus trackers and this sort of thing. But you can also look at performance the previous day, and I realized, oh, the uh, Greyhound that arrived yesterday, the route I wanted to take today, was two and a half hours delayed. So maybe that's not a good idea. So I decided to drive. Um, oop, how do you, that's not the right one. Is this not? I can just use mine. Is it this, this, this thing, right? Oh, there it goes. Okay, thank you. Uh, all right, so here's what I'm going to talk about. Uh, my research objectives is part of this, uh, you read the title there, uh, regard to public transit employment accessibility for people with varying mobilities. So oftentimes in terms of uh, employment accessibility studies, we assume some standard level of mobility. This is trying to account for a continuum of mobility um, as well as different types of transportation barriers that uh, people may encounter using public transit. Um, we'll use, uh, using those employment accessibility estimates We'll feed them into an optimization public tra to, to essentially help plan uh, transit infrastructure and it prioritize uh, bus stop, say, retrofits to improve employment accessibility over time. Um, so it's instead of an ad hoc uh, approach of just fixing arbitrary bus stops, using some information to say which ones have the greatest impact. And I'll talk about some next steps. So here's the study area, which is essentially Kalamazoo County. Um, it has 13, well, actually within the urbanized area, we have uh, uh, four cities, so that's in gray. And that's the urbanized area is also the area where uh, the fixed route transportation system um, is planned, uh, called K-Metro. And uh, we're looking at the city of Kalamazoo here, the largest city in the metro area. Uh, the metro area has about 250,000 people and city of Kalamazoo has uh, around 75,000. So just we've been going over a lot of these demographics on aging um, and my, uh, my charts kind of add on to that as well. And this is looking at trends and also projections of the 65 and older population but you get the drift. There's a lot going to be a lot more older people there and that segment is going to be growing a lot faster than the total population uh, within Michigan and also in Kalamazoo County which is uh, where, where these data are. So you have uh, a high growth rate within the older sectors of the population. Uh, also disability status by age group is kind of interesting. Uh, maybe it's not surprising that uh, the age group 75 and older you have greater rates of people identified themselves of having some sort of disability. Um, but even uh, other age groups, you see that as well. In fact, uh, this chart is showing in total number of people who have identified as having some sort of disability. Uh, this could be a cognitive, uh, emotional, as well as a physical uh, limitation. Um, you actually have over about 58% being within the working age population of 18 to 64. So it's not just older people who have identified as having disabilities, but also people who are working, right? Uh, or at least of working age. What kinds of disabilities of, uh, and then going back, within all of Kalamazoo County, uh, about of that 250,000 population, 13% of that population has identified as having some sort of disability. Now this is the distribution of types of disabilities that the American Community Survey 
identifies or has categorized. Uh, so 25% of that group uh, has identified as having some sort of ambulatory um, disability, meaning that they have serious difficulty walking or climbing stairs. And this is, uh, uh, so you have essentially mobility limitations which could influence uh, whether or not you're able to access transit given that oftentimes you have to walk to transit and then board a vehicle um, and uh, there are a lot of intermediate steps in between. Looking at, <clears throat> given that we have a lot of working age population who have a disability, what are the employment, what is the employment status and also labor force participation of people with a disability? See here that um, Labor force participation, 56% of people with a disability are just not in the labor force. They're not participating in the labor force. Um, you have, of those who are in the labor force, uh, the unemployment rate is considerably higher than those without a disability, 17% versus 10%. Um, uh, so you're seeing some disparity there uh, in terms of employment outcomes. This could be due to a range of factors. Uh, but perhaps mobility, uh, I mean, ab ability to get to a job, the accessi uh, how accessible employment is, and your ability to get there, and even the function of uh, w you know, the transportation system itself uh, may be playing some role. And there has been, there have been, a, uh, in doing the literature rev review for this study, finding that there are several uh, studies suggesting that a lot of people who have disabilities rely on public transit, especially fixed route transit, to get to their work uh, place. And if that isn't uh, uh, functioning at a very high level, um, then obviously they're, they're, they have some uh, decreased level of accessibility. And in fact, you find that uh, people with a disability who are using public transit uh, rate transportation system as overall uh, needs improvement more than others. Um, in fact, if you've been to downtown Chicago lately, they're doing a major retrofit to one of the key L stations right at, um, uh, well, it's on Wabash in Washington, I believe. And none of those uh, uh, L stations right downtown are ADA accessible, no um, elevators there. So they're finally putting in one. Uh, so you may wonder why am I talking about public transit uh, in an area like Kalamazoo where in terms of mode share, it doesn't play much of a role. Uh, this is looking at um, mode share over time, 2007 to 2015, uh, you know, where car, truck, or van alone are the columns there. And you're reading that from the right side. So essentially over 80% uh, 86%, I think, of, uh, or 83% of uh, all commuter work commutes are by car, private car alone. Uh, whereas public transportation with these triangles here, um, although it has sh shown some growth, it's still not even close to 2%. So it's a sm fairly small percentage. But of the population who is using transit, uh, it may be those who are transportation disadvantaged and don't have a lot of opportunities to maybe take a uh, use a private car, whether or not it is an economic challenge of not being able to afford the capital investment of an automobile. Maybe some students can to, uh, attest to that. Um, or you're uh, um, unable to drive a vehicle for whatever reason. Um, you may also wonder, well, you know, shared economy is going to improve this because, you know, you can get picked up by uh, uh, Uber or Lyft or something like that. You may have seen all the lawsuits uh, against the, these companies, although they are providing the, uh, new models for uh, accommodating people with disabilities. But at this point in time, it's not there yet with regard to Uber and Lyft and so on. Um, well, how about paratransit? Well, paratransit's an option, right? And we have a... a uh, Metro County Connect here, about 45 vehicles operating within the Kalam all of Kalamazoo County. Um, one of the problems here is just the expense of uh, paratransit. $28 uh, per unlinked passenger trip versus $3.26 uh, 
uh, for fixed route buses. So getting people and making the fixed route bus system more accessible um, ends up having cost efficiencies. So here again, uh, returning to our study area, this is the tra fixed route transit routes. Uh, there are about, I think there are presently 20 of them uh, with about 750 stops. So this is uh, the uh, area we worked with. <clears throat> Those data um, uh, were provided to us by K-Metro, which is the fixed route transportation operator, or transit operator here, service provider. Um, but they also provide their information in GTFS format. Uh, I talked about this last year. This is actually kind of a continuation um, of what I presented last year. Uh, this year, though, we have a more refined conceptual model and actually have final results. So um, if you may or may not know the GTFS, um, it's a standard way to share schedules and routes uh, of public transit system. There are some required uh, pieces of information such as the schedule under the calendar uh, file is just a series of text files um, and there are some optional ones that, the two that were of interest here were the ones relating to wheelchair accessible or wheelchair boarding wheelchair accessible means uh, with regard to the trip means that the vehicle itself accommodates at least one person in a wheelchair uh, the stops are wheelchair boarding, essentially having a platform where you can board, um, as well as um, uh, a, yeah, so uh, some connectivity outside of the the uh, stop to another um, uh, sidewalk. So you have street connectivity. Um, those are the. Now I should mention that only three percent, even though uh, GTFS data, uh, something like. Um, 800 uh, transit agencies now provide their data in that format. If you ever use Google Maps for your routing and you want to take transit, that's what it's using, GTFS provided by the transit agency. Um, but not all of them have these optional wheelchair related or accessibility information. A uh, study conducted in 2010 said that only 3% of these transit agencies had that information. Um, so we had to create it ourselves, even for K-Metro didn't have it at the time. So uh, we used some information for, that they uh, had from a bus stop survey. Um, there was a survey conducted by uh, um, DLZ in coordination with Kalamazoo Metro Transit, which looked at the ADA compliance of all of their bus stops, all the 750 bus stops throughout the county. Um, and uh, with regard to these eight categories, something like um, 16 different measures. They looked at both the stops as well as the shelters at the stops. We were only concerned in this research with regard to the bus stops because that's all that the GTFS data structure would accommodate. So although they had a lot of information on the bus stops, the data in, uh, structure itself only accommodated a small number of parameters. So this survey uh, found that only 7.1% of the bus stops within the system uh, were identified as fully compliant across all these different categories. So a very small number. If you've traveled around Kalamazoo, looked at bus stops, oftentimes it's just a sign you know, in the grass or that's the best case scenario. It could be just in a snowbank, which is the worst case scenario. Um, and uh, that's uh, a bus stop. That's where the bus will stop. Other, uh, others have nice shelters with boarding platforms and fully equipped, uh, but that's only again, 42, uh, 52 of the total 751 are fully compliant. 72% uh, did not have a boarding platform. 31% uh, did not connect to a sidewalk. So you can actually uh, uh, Ha, uh, get your wheelchair off the bus, but then from there you may be stuck because uh, you may have to go through some mud or uh, go over a, um, a large embankment or, or what have you. So here's what it looks like geographically. Here are all the compliant stops. Uh, those are all the non-compliant stops within the area. Uh, for it's an employment accessibility, so we looked at uh, we we use uh, loads data. It's from the U.S. Census. Uh, looks uh, essentially there are 113,000 
2,706 jobs within the Kalamazoo County um, by place of work. And uh, that's a special representation here. They're about 5,785 census blocks. So it's a high level of, uh, fine level of geography. This is um, looking at by place of work. So actually, uh, or place of residence. So the uh, workers are more dispersed. Residences are more dispersed than the jobs themselves. So here's our uh, conceptual framework for the uh, data, the processing, and the results. We used OpenStreetMap. These are all open source and publicly available data sets. Uh, Tigerline shapefiles, the loads employment data, the GTFS together with the survey data. Uh, put it into Open Trip Planner, which is an open source analytical um, uh, routing system that does batch processing. We developed some scripts to do some uh, calculations in order to come up with time average and spatially weighted job accessibilities, boardings, walking distance, and destinations for each of those 5,785 uh, census blocks. Uh, but we did this using certain assumptions, and this is kind of the value added of the research, that continuum of mobility in terms of the individual. Uh, some model one, which is kind of your standard employment accessibility model. I only have two minutes. Oh my. Uh, private is uh, using only private automobile. Uh, models two f through five uh, assume different levels of walking speed as well as maximum distance someone is likely to walk or want to walk. Uh, so you have uh, maximum distance being a half mile for. Uh, models three and five. And then you also look at it in terms of whether or not those bus stops are actually compliant. So can you use those bus stops? So we're looking at employment accessibility in those. So these are the different equations we use. Uh, looking at just an isochrone, essentially, uh, you know, how far you can get by mode um, uh, across the street network. Within 60 minutes, you can get everywhere by car, by private automobile, which probably isn't surprising. You get, you know, throughout the county and beyond. Uh, this is what it looks like if you are just limited to public transit, the full public transit system within uh, Kalamazoo County. Okay, uh, So within 60 minutes, you're looking at a, a much smaller footprint. Um, in fact, you're not even able to access all of the, transport, the public transit network. Um, this is if you, uh, this is model four. So if you, say, uh, moved at a slower pace, um, don't walk as fast, and you are limited to a half mile walking total, uh, this is, would be your employment accessibility. Uh, originating, by the way, from the most accessible location, which is the transportation center downtown. Um, this is what it would look like if um, you moved at a normal, at a, uh, I would say, average pace walking, uh, but limited yourself to only using um, uh, compliant, uh, ADA compliant bus stops. And then this is the worst case scenario. If you move slowly, and only used ADA compliant bus stops. Uh, this is your employment accessibility. So very limited with, uh, throughout Kalamazoo. Um, we, these are time average accessibility. So we actually, there are about 500,000 iterations uh, because it, your accessibility depends on your departure time. So these, uh, you know, that's what I was talking about with the Greyhound, right? Uh, how fast is the bus going, even the scheduled Greyhound, uh, and when do you leave to go get the bus, when you need to arrive. And one thing that's interesting, I noticed uh, with the, um, the uh, employment of uh, people with disabilities, there's a lot of part-time work. So flexible hours are really important. So when having uh, not only operation on peak times, but in non-peak times. Um, let me move on. This is all no, total number of jobs by model. So you can see, you know, uh, the bars again are the private auto. You're getting about 100%. Best ca case scenario with public transit, you're getting 60 something percent. With uh, only um, ADA compliance stops, you're only ac accessing 30% of the jobs. Uh, these are job accessibility again, using the same um, uh, graduated uh, categories. Uh, this is by model one for pri private automobile. Job is accessible for model two. Uh, that would be public transit. This is transit with limited walking. This is the worst case scenario. Uh, so anyway, I could go through these, but you can see this is how, this is depending on departure time, what your employment accessibility looks like. Again, 
uh, the, the transit system doesn't operate um, uh, uniformly at each place. So that's why there's variation and that's why you average it. Uh, okay, so um, my, the last one minute I, I'm going to summarize. Well, with this information, what can we do with it? Um, we heard about transition plans, ADA, or maybe I was overhearing someone talk about ADA transition plans. All communities are, and even transit agencies are required to um, put together a prioritization uh, plan where they look at, identify essentially uh, all of the barriers within their jurisdiction um, and their plan for addressing those over time. Uh, unfortunately, even the ADA transition plans, not many municipalities, even though they're legally obligated to do so, do, do not have one up to date. Uh, but you need to prioritize, right? Make sure your, uh, uh, your money is going to, to have the uh, biggest bang for the buck. So we use the optimization, um, uh, linear optimiza optimization along with our accessibility values to see which bus stops and to inform our prioritization of the bus stops retrofits um, and assume some cost uh, constraint for each phase in a five phase scheme. Uh, this is, I'll end, end with this, um, uh, just showing how the, uh, all of the distributions here are based on a, a 10,000 random distribution. If you're just ad hoc, you know, let's choose any bus stop, but do, run that 10,000 times um, on the model, on the, uh, all of the 750, um, you could see that the cost is actually much greater uh, than it would be if you had a strategic approach like we were doing, as well as job accessibility is actually greater if you have that uh, uh, targeted approach, jobs in catchment area. Across all of these, it performs much better. Um, the last, uh, so yeah, any, the, where is this going? Um, there's actually a poster out there um, talking about uh, one of the, one of the uh, how, how this research is kind of uh, extended into a new research area. Um, we have, uh, we know a fair amount about the bus stops in the survey. Unfortunately, not all communities and, and uh, transit agencies have the money to, um, to, car to carry out such a survey. So we're talking about automating the uh, assessment of um, the public right of way in terms of ADA compliance using LIDAR data. Um, so kind of developing algorithms to do that automatically. And we're also looking at intercity connections. Um, and that's, uh, so we're looking at 93 urban areas, not just Kalamazoo County now. So.